So Pat Ambleton, Executive Director of Personnel and Personnel Recruiting, and recruiting for, at University of Illinois Football. And this is the biggest day of the year, basically, for your staff. Um, what's it feel like you know, to, to have the class come to fruition and, and sign these 19 kids today? Um, it's fun. It's, it's, it's uh, something that we've built up to for a year and a half with this class. Um, and I think that we get an opportunity to, to be able to talk about these guys publicly, um, the relationships that we've built with them, with their families, their parents. Um, you know, now is the time that we can kind of share our stories with, with the public as to how the recruiting process went about. Um, but it is, it's an exciting time for those guys. Um, and I'm, I'm pumped that we signed, you know, 19 really, really good football players, but more importantly, better people. Your recruiting staff starts out with these kids at the, really the ground level, right? What, what's the dynamic like between the on the field coaches and your office in terms of who you're identifying to, to, to target uh, for recruiting purposes? Yeah, um, I think a lot of the guys that we've landed, um, it, it does start, uh, majority of it starts within the recruiting, the personnel department. Um, and so, you know, we've got a, um, a crew of about six people that, that, that kind of lead our evals type, um, with, with myself overseeing it. But uh, from, from Houston Griffith to John Proto um, to Drake Leeper um, and, you know, and Nate McNeil as well, like those ones identify a lot of our high school players that we've signed, okay? Uh, and then from there, um, we do a lot of background, early background when they're sophomores, juniors, um, to the point where we get it to our coaches um, getting ready to, to evaluate them and make the offer. And so uh, we try to make it pretty easy on the coaches, um, knowing that they're, they're going to like the players that we present them. Um, and then when we do extend an offer, um, it's really just a, a um, you know, a work with the entire building as to how we, we nobody really recruits individually. We recruit as a group, as a building, um, start from the head coach down to, to the lowest person. So um, everything is, is just multiple people talk to one kid or one parent. They're going to see multiple, multiple personalities and they're going to understand our building that much better. Over the last three years, not maybe just this class, why are those June and July official visits so successful and so fast, I guess, quickly successful? Because you see commitments just not more than 48 hours after they're big old. It, it honestly started when we got out of COVID, right? Because um, you couldn't have visits for sure. a year. And that was really the, the, before COVID had hit, it was starting to trend towards summers. Mm -hmm. um, and I personally wasn't a fan of summers just because, you know, summer's a long time till signing day. Um, but with with uh, this staff and Coach B, like coming out of COVID, we wanted to be the one of the first guys, one of the first schools to get kids on campus. Uh, we saw saw how successful we were, um, and that's just the norm for us now. And, and we try to lock people in, you know, big weekends because players recruit players and, and parents recruit parents. And so when you get a couple guys who are committed prior to. Um, coming up for their official visit in June, um, it just it helps it helps the family the family atmosphere and family vibes. But um, I love them, and we're going to continue to do them um, as long as I'm here. I hope. <laughs> You've been here a long time now, multiple head coaches. How's it changed over the years for you? Um, it's uh, other than getting fatter and, and older, and um, you know I got three kids now, so it's a it's a deal to me where this is personal. Um, I love this place. I love this university. I love this this community, um, and and I want it to be successful. Um, and these fans deserve that more than anything. So, it's more on a personal level to me about um, just wanting to make sure that that we work our absolute butts off um, so that we can be proud of the product we put on the field. Um, and couldn't ask for a better person to work for than Coach Bielmo. Um He's he's truly. You know, I call him a friend, a mentor. Um, what he's done for myself in this profession and for my family, um, I'll be, you know, forever indebted to him. Um, but he's also opened my eyes as to as to um, how to grow uh, within this profession as well. And for that, like I said, I I, I I'll, I'll never be able to thank him enough. As, how, as, long did, oh, how long did it take you to kind of get used to a Brett Bielema type guy when you look at kids? Like he talked about here. Coach, that's a Coach B guy because um, mm -hmm. I know you recruit a lot of guys who are instantly maybe not really recruited, mm -hmm. but right. there's a fit there. Yeah, I think um, honestly, first it started like Coach B. Um, he entrusted me pretty early on when when I interviewed with them to, sure. to retain a job and get promoted to sure. it. Um, 
And then as we started talking about players just on our current roster the first year, um, whether that was his test or whether that was him just truly asking, sure. um, I think a lot of the answers I gave him about players and my evaluation on players lined up with what he saw um, in just terms of athleticism to where they fit on the field, all that stuff. And so um, it was never a – we see players very similar. Um, he's taught me a lot of things in terms of the, the trenches that, that I didn't know before, um, but I think that – I've seen it. I just didn't know how to communicate it the way that he communicates it. Um, and so, but in terms of what we want from an athletic standpoint, um, he's he's kind of allowed me to, to spread my wings and go on that front with with our personnel side. Assistant coaches, as we know, come and go quite a bit in college football. That how does that change? Maybe the recruiting territories that you, that you'll focus on. Yeah, uh, it, it'll change. I mean, it'll change based on the background where they where they come from, um, where they've been previously. Um, but as long as, as as we're here, like we'll always have primary states that we'll always target, um, just based on, on Coach B's background, based on this university, based on, um, you know, distance and, and get ability to, to get to Champaign. And so um, you look at direct flights, that, that all plays into a factor. Um, but I think that in college football, like you need as a recruiter, you need to be a chameleon. You need to adapt and adjust to any environment that you're put into um, because the most successful ones are. And so if I've never recruited the state of Texas before, but I'm going to Texas, then you got to be willing to embrace it, open up to it, um, and kind of change um, you know, your way of thinking or talking or, or doing um, based on what, what area you're going to. And so um, our guys do that. Our guys are, are good and they're comfortable and and it all starts when you go through the hiring process. Like, coach knows what he's looking for, and um, an elite recruiter is going to be one of them. Same question I asked Coach B, but to dovetail off that point, when you get to prospects like Tanner and Easton, who you haven't had a kid from Nebraska and Utah since World War One, yeah. like as a letterman, <laughs> um, does that give you confidence as a staff that I know the world's getting smaller, mm -hmm. like all the time, but hey, we can go into anywhere and go get a kid if he's a fit? It does. It does. And it's something that, like, We've recruited Nebraska the last three years. And not a lot of people know that, right? But Bart Miller's from the state. Uh, he was born there, you know, has a history there. And so it's something that we identified going into year one. Okay, there's some talent in these certain parts of the country um, that I'm, that if we lay the groundwork by year three or year four, we should start seeing some, some um, results pay off. And so I think Tanner's one of those that is is a uh, is a key example of that you know now Utah completely different right, yeah, like right. We, we are not I'm not recruited. suggesting there's a pipeline no, coming from Utah no but. And, and it's hard um, it's harder to recruit there because there's there's you know you have um, just with their faith and their background mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's more difficult to pull here from from Utah um, but there was something about Easton that we fell in love with his personality and I think he fell in love and he appreciated that and saw that and he was committed to another school. Um, but he loved our competitive spirit because it was very lines up very much with him, um, and so took the visit out here. And, and honestly, like, just he felt more in love with it. So, will that open up more pipelines? Probably, it probably would out west. But um, it's not something where I'm going to say, "Hey, let's go devote." No, you know, I know seven well, days to go to go out to Utah to recruit it. But yeah, it's definitely going to help open up some some opportunities. We know you're looking for guys that are big, strong, and fast. But how much? What would you say the percent of time is spent working on? figuring out if the kid is the right academic and cultural fit? I think um, just with, with the staff that I have, we get all of that very quickly now. Uh, whereas in, in previous years, it's been, it's a little bit more difficult just because our staff size wasn't always that big. Um, but when we find a player that we like, there's a checklist of items that we have to get before we go and recruit them. Um, main ones being academic and, and me being here going on year 12, like I'm very well versed as to, I can look at a transcript to make a decision in about five seconds, whether the kid's recruitable or not. Um, and if it's borderline, then I know the, the areas or, or people that I need to get a second opinion from um, for that side of it. So um, academically, it's, it's, it's uh, a little bit easier than when I first started, um, just because I'm more experienced in it now. But um, the character one's the biggest part, right? You know, the, the, like we can identify talent thing you can't answer is, is, is he a good person until you start getting to know them and getting to know people around them. And then the, the, the most important thing that I think is forgotten is, does a kid love football, right? Like that should be our first question for every player that, that we sign is, does he love football? And it should be yes.
um, because there's guys that like being a football player and like getting the gear and the swag and all that stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, is he going to run through somebody's face, get up, and do it again and again and again? And that's what we have to figure out. Same question again I asked Coach B, which is when you hear of a commitment for a kid that you think is solid, getting recruited by other power programs that have a tradition of, of winning, um, does that concern you maybe even more than Coach B? Or, or do you, have you learned that? Yes. No, but if I feel like we got a kid, we, you know, we, we need to back off. It's I understand it. It's the nature yeah. of this business. Sure. Um, I can't say that you know we haven't done it because we we are Correct. we are part of it as well. Um, we do feel that our connection is probably more strong, and we should feel that way, right? We, um, that our connection is is stronger um, than most schools would have with the, with a certain player, and so when. A kid who is committed um, starts getting flirted on by by a bigger, sexier program that's got higher accolades. Um, is there a concern? Yeah, there's a concern, but but it's something that you know we are going to be out out in front of um, and ask because on his side of it, he's got to do the best thing for him. Well, we also do too, and if that means we have to start open up our recruiting and looking for more players at that position, then uh, we got to cover our bases. How's the staff celebrate a commitment? Is there a big game? <laughs> uh, usually goes through the text text group first, um, which half the guys don't have their phones on them when they're in, in season in meetings, right? Right. Um, but when it comes in from official visits and and we get good news, um, I can usually see something coming through the office door. So I'll send a text out to the group, and then everybody will kind of run down to the head coach's office and mob the person coming out. So it's pretty fun.